Hey everybody, this is Jay Rosehill and you're listening to Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Rick Aurelia? I'm just on this ride with you, man. Yeah? <laughs> you just wake up? or I, I think I did. Oh. I didn't sleep much. No? Last night. Rodeo? No. Yeah. Rough well, one? boys got a big win coming off a, <laughs> you know, another 10, boys, yeah. 10 gamer. Um, Good for you. Losing streak. No, I, I, uh, I was on my own. I was on my own. Oh, you were? But, yeah. Celebrating the big win. After celebrating the, the big win. I was there. 10 game, game losing streak. Yeah. That's There's a lot of excitement around the Third the one city. in a year. Um, yeah. It's pretty, uh, it sucks. But it, it's wild if you really think about it, um, having three 10-game losing streaks. But, you know, it is what it is, and they won a game last night. Yeah. And uh, I was 100%. happy about that. Scott Lawton came back. Yeah. Um, that Trending helps. in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. And since last week, just like that, you know, we, I think we were at six, seven, game, seven games probably last yeah, week. And right. uh, just like that, it was 10 games. 10-game losing streak. Uh, so thank God they stopped the bleeding and it didn't go 11, 12, 15, 20. I yeah. mean, who knows where, where it could go. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, getting lots back. Started off the game with a couple tillies, get the yes, crowd into that it. that was nice. That was nice to little see. little life, a little spark. Um, Big Mac and D'Lo. Yeah, props to the boys for showing up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how this thing is going to look, uh, you know, game by game. But uh, at least if they're – you know, competing like they are um, and getting a body or two back a week, maybe or two every two weeks. Um, yeah. You know, trending the right way, but yeah, right Baller direction. Baller and Debo said that it looks like they're going to be getting a couple guys back here in the next few days, so that that will help for sure. Um, you know, and and they're competing. We've talked about that. Like, don't want to beat a dead horse here, but they are competing. They're staying in the games, but it, it's tough when you're when. You have a lot of manpower out. Yeah. So getting some bodies back, lots last night was good to see. I thought I, I was sh- I didn't think he was going to be back already, but I'm glad. Yeah, he, it was uh, a lot was. sooner than I thought. Anyways, <clears throat> so I think it was uh, a godsend that it wasn't his head and it was his shoulder. Yeah, obviously, goodness, right? Because yeah. originally I thought it was. Uh, I think a lot I of people he, did. You know, he hit his head. He's got a big melon. This guy wears a large helmet. Yeah. I always give him shit about that. Yeah, I used to put, like, double X on it. Yeah, that <laughs> like, big of a head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't notice yeah. he had that big of a head. He does. But um, <laughs> I'm glad he's all right. I'm glad it wasn't a, anything to do with his head, for sure. Yeah, so I guess, you know, we'll see. There's, uh, what, four or five home games here coming up uh, every other day, pretty much for the next week and a half. So, yeah. Uh, you're gonna one by one. They're gonna have to start uh, trying to <laughs> recapture these points um, and just staying in these games, keeping them low scoring. Obviously, can't yep. be giving up these odd man rushes, two on ones that we've seen um, haunt them the last few games. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, stop the bleeding, trend in the right direction, get some healthy bodies back, get the saves. Yes, um, and building outwards. I think that's all we can ask, and then yep. we'll see where we go from there. We got a couple things going on here, Nast. The Philly show at Oaks Convention Center. Yes, yes. Uh, looking obviously. forward to it. Uh, for for all the collectors out there, jerseys, hockey cards, uh, just sports fans in general. Yeah, all it's, sports. Uh, yeah. It's it's quite an amazing thing. Uh, some current flyers will be there. Yeah. Uh, other current athletes, uh, some retired athletes, and then uh, us uh, plugs will be lodged in the background there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> We're not sure where exactly. We, we where. might be in the parking lot. We're not really <laughs> yeah. sure, but no, uh, playing that one by ear. Yeah, uh, but we will be there. It, yes, and, and hopefully you'll be awake. I will be awake. Are you kidding me? You know I'm what's always going on. awake. Yeah, the, it's uh, Friday to Sunday as well. Like uh, this, We're, we'll be there Sunday, but uh, right. it does start on Friday. It's uh, really cool. I've seen a lot of the. The stuff, um, if you check out their Instagram and all that, like they have some really cool. Oh, items, for sure, man. yeah. It's, it's for a collector's dream. If yeah, you're, you're exactly. Trying to pick things up, so. Yeah, no doubt. And then uh, in the not so distant future, <laughs> our good friend with fans of Philly, Joe DiBiagio, has us going on a trip in February, and we're super pumped about our heading to Seattle. Sierra, yeah. buddy, Dave Haxtall. 
And yeah, uh, from there, we'll be going to Vancouver. Ooh. We've done Look some out. damage in Vancouver before. Look out, Roxy. Who oh. the Roxy? Hopefully that place is still open. It Hopefully it survived COVID. Yeah, good point. I'm sure it did. Yeah, I would think. That's a staple. That's a staple. <laughs> if anything <laughs> survived yeah. COVID, Roxy, can, the Roxy, the Roxy can. could definitely survive I'm COVID. I'm sure it passed a few cases <laughs> off <laughs> if people were in there. But uh, seriously, check out fansofphilly.com. It's awesome. Best sports travel agency around. Oh, yeah. It's not Looking even forward close. to that one. These guys are great. Oh, yeah. Lots of fun. And a couple other thanks to our sponsors. Here we go. We got... Toby, obviously, yes. right? I've been rocking the Toby for some time. Uh, check them out at tobyhockey.com. Got some youth hockey sticks coming out, yes, the Ravens. The Raven. Some different flexes for youth hockey players, as well as the obvious patented Toby Airblade. Yes, sir. So check them out at tobyhockey.com. And then a big thank you to our good friends at DLI Commercial. Britt, Brett. appreciate you. And... Getting into our presenting sponsor, Cura Leaf. Welcome to Cura Leaf, a medical marijuana dispensary. Whether you're a longtime patient or you're just getting acquainted with this incredible plant, Cura Leaf of Pennsylvania is honored to guide you along your medical marijuana journey. Have questions? Google Cura Leaf PA or stop by one of their 18 locations across the Commonwealth or visit cureleaf.com forward slash locations. A big thank you. All right, Nast, episode 95 with Jay Rosehill. Rosie, ready to rock. Let's do it, Let's man. go. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Sotomayor. And this week, we are so excited to have our good friend, former Flyer, former NHL enforcer, the host of the Leafs Morning Take, Mr. Jay Rosehill. What's up, Rose Daddy? What's up, boys? Good to be on this <laughs> damn thing. Love it. <laughs> Fucking great to Good have to you, bro. You. Yeah, man. Wish we had you right here beside us, but we understand you where you are, and you, it just can't happen that way. Once the budgets start to blow up, we'll be flying around to each other. Don't <laughs> there worry. You yeah. There you go. I bring like you, that. Bring you in studio. 2.0. <laughs> How you doing, brother? I'm good, dude. Just, uh, yeah, I just finished our show this morning. We kind of do a, a leaf show here every morning, uh, every weekday morning. So I've been doing that kind of co-hosting with a dude, Nick Alberg out of Toronto and throwing it back to the TO days and all the mayhem that that market is. So I just finished that up and, uh, kind of got the, uh, day to myself. Otherwise days off from, uh, my real job and just kind of grinding away. Going to hit the rink later on today and coach some U nines. So oh, we got our got shit pumped out of us here this weekend so we need to go over some <laughs> d-zone stuff today <laughs> there you go you the d-zone cover you might need to come help uh, elvis team out with that he's looking at 40 some shots a game oh. but that's what you get for being a goalie yeah right you signed up supposed for to stop it that's the way she that's goes. great that's yeah it is that's great you're coaching um i've been doing that too the last year so year and a half with elvis so it's been Sweet. fun yeah it's good stuff eh yeah, how you liking the uh, the media gig? Did you get the itch to to hop on the dark side, or how did that uh, play out? Yeah, I just kind of well, you had Frank Saravalli on there the other day, and um, mm -hmm. I saw him, but he's like my boss, I guess, and he just kind of it was Luke Shen actually, who former Flyer and Maple Leaf actually was. I keep in touch with Lukey, and he was like, "Hey, would you ever want to do some like media for hockey?" And I'm like, "Yeah, actually, I'm kind of looking for something on the side. I'm I'm not totally." Uh, fulfilling my time and energy here i'd like to put it into something so it was kind of in the back of my mind to figure something out and then uh and then boom frank texts me and we start chatting and i met our uh the host nick alberga and he's like if you guys hit it off that'd be great and we just had a quick bullshit and easy going so um then it was like two weeks later we're live on live on air so happened quick but it's uh i don't know it's fun dude i wasn't uh you know you know i'm at the fire hall and stuff i'm a firefighter too and uh guys are watching the game and oh we got to watch san jose play anaheim and i'm like who gives a fuck <laughs> that happens in that game right like i couldn't care less but you used to have your life on the line riles and nast like you guys know what it's like your whole day and your whole life is turned upside down by wins and losses and what that team's doing now i i have zero input or zero cares and and then it's nice now to go into a show where I actually care about what the Maple Leafs are doing again. I remember all this stuff about the ups and downs and the criticisms and the the back and forth that market gives you. So all of a sudden you're you're given a rip again about something and you're I'm diving in and watching games and my it's fun because my boy just fell in love with the Leafs like a year ago. 
out of the blue, just in love with Austin Matthews, Leafs everywhere. I'm like, dude, I didn't push this on him. He just went nuts with it all of a sudden. So he's loving it. We're watching games together. It's just, it's awesome. It's, it's fun. But I do feel like, uh, I am on the dark side sometimes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel you because uh, you know, when I got out of coaching, I, I completely disconnected from hockey. Didn't watch hockey at all. So then, once yeah. we got back into this pod, I was forced to to watch at, le- at least a little bit, at least the Flyers, you know, and, co- and cover them. But uh, it's nice to it was nice to at least have a reference point when you start talking to players and, and alumni, right? To they feel like you're actually engaged in the game but uh totally uh once i stopped playing it was like you know i could give two shits about who <laughs> anything that's going on tell you the honest truth but uh but it's nice to get back so happy yeah. you're enjoying yourself there on the other side for yeah sure. i think it's normal to get out of that and step away for a minute when you've been in it especially coach and like jason LaBarber. i talked to him and he's mm-hmm. Um, I finished up playing with him basically and then he got ready to coaching and he's like coaching is insane man it's like way more stressful and you actually have no control over anything so it's like more frustrating <laughs> and I'm like that sounds like a nightmare he's like I'm more stressed out now than when I was playing I was like that sounds <laughs> awful dude but <laughs> you can attest to that Riles jumping right into the American league as a coach like geez man Oh yeah, man. Yeah, there is almost more pressure, and you and you really d- don't have a whole lot of control, right? I mean, you're only as good as the the squad you're really given, and and, and you you do your best to kind of mold it and shape it, but um, you know you're you're replaceable, as you know. And if the team don't perform, it's like see you later, and and, and you deal with all that stress for no you know, for, for for no good reason because you get fired anyways. You know, it's just like yeah, uh, yeah it's pretty messed up. Um, but yeah, he's he's in Calgary now, right? Barbs? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he was. Start, I think he started off with the Hitman and then was goalie coach. I think he's associate now. And yeah, he's been moving up. And I don't see him. Uh, I, I think I can see him being a GM one day. To be honest, if he sticks really, it out. Eh? Yeah, he just loves. He loves getting his fingers on everything and analyzing. <laughs> but I don't think I he likes it. being under Sutter's like thumb all the time. He said like, I'm sure, Fuck, if it's going, you know how it is in the locker room. If it's not going good, but in the coach's room, it's even more like someone head coach walks in Sutter walks on everyone like tightens up and shit if it's not going good like fuck me you gotta leave that stuff behind i can't stand that's what i was happy about retiring is no more of that garbage right <laughs> yeah exactly i never i never saw the the gm and barbs but i guess uh you know i never picked his brain enough about it but uh <laughs> that's 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 impressive you know but you know he's done he obviously he's done well for himself he keeps climbing the ladder and finding new opportunities so uh, you know, this guy's the sky's the limit if you you play your cards right and don't leave a trail of shit, piss people off. Exactly. Yeah, it's a small world, the hockey world, isn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. is. But no, he's a good guy. I love uh, I love Barbs. I guess he, he wrapped up in Lehigh. I guess you that was your last year in the American League, and then you moved on to yeah, the UK. Yeah, I guess it was, it was he retired. My his last year was with me, and then I played a couple more overseas. Yeah, but um, no, he lived in the same complex as me. We drove together every day, so we would bullshit with each other a little bit and i uh once he got into coaching and started climbing the ladder i could see him just getting his uh getting his fingers wrapped around a team in some way shape or form but we'll see he hasn't done it yet we're not going to pat him on the back too hard yeah right <laughs> no that's kidding. awesome uh what rosie what's going on in uh to right now things calm down a little bit <clears throat> yes they have well it never calms down it's just it's either yeah, that's good it's, point. It's, it's either on fire for this reason or it's on fire for that reason. It's nuts, but like, <laughs> fuck, man. Like October, obviously they they stink it up, right? They have that terrible road trip to the the West Coast and lose everything pretty much. And the sky was falling. And like, I, I've been on Twitter for like three weeks, man. I stayed away from that when I was playing, and the only reason I got it is because of this job. I'm like, oh, I better get involved. And just instantly, all I'm, I just can't believe it. It's like, fire everybody. I told you Dubik was a bum and we got to get Keith out of here. This is too much. We can't fucking tolerate this. And it's like, it's been a bad week, dude. A bad week. <laughs> yeah, right? oh. Oh, and, then they, and then they go off to the races all November. And now everyone's like, boys are rolling. This is the team. It's like, holy. <laughs> this is the team. It's, <laughs> it's wild. It. It's a roller coaster, but like everything is under an absolute magnifying glass. So it's hilarious to step back and be like, man. But you can see that like the OG Twitter people who have been doing it forever are like a little more ahead of the curve, it seems like. And I don't know. I'm just dip my toe in and see what's up on that thing. But it's wild. And, and that market is wild. So it's actually fun to do a show on it because it's just nonstop craziness, right? 
Yeah. And that, that's a place where you're always going to have people watching. Like you said, it, it can be good or bad. Oh, yeah. Everybody's right. got something to say. Totally. That's so funny. The sky is always falling. Yeah. In a small, in a smaller uh, version of that, something similar in Philly here, right? I mean, obviously, uh, we're not, not the Toronto Maple Leafs, but I think the way the Flyers started, everyone was, you know, trending in the right direction and everyone is feeling this vibe towards, you know, the tort there and all this other stuff. And then just like that, he dropped 10 and <laughs> right back to Quickly. square, square one. It's weird because you'd think it would go the other way with them being a little scared of torts and then kind of starting shit and then he kind of figures it out and then away they go and they have a ripper but it was the opposite of that and uh big win last night i uh i actually bet against them last night i had my one segment on <laughs> points bet and i was like dude i just i gotta go with the with the uh with the islanders on this one and there you go they pulled themselves out of that ditch but it was about time yeah. and the reason why i was like i didn't know they're gonna start off with two dust-ups in the first yeah first right <laughs> yeah. right away like if I knew they were going was, old school Broad Street, I would have taken them for Fox Lakes. I know, right? I, I, Rosie, I uh, I was at the game and and I ran to get a drink real quick, and I'm um, like, I'm, I might miss the face off, right? I just hear ding, 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 like <laughs> nothing, you know? Where I'm like, what? I'm like shit, so I had to watch it on TV, uh, and by the time I paid, they've had the second dust off. Oh man, I'm like shit. <laughs> Classic mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> you oh, can't get man. in line and start of the game. No, ass, you know, dude, I thought I had time. Boys. No. I thought I had time. <laughs> I, he I he, he thought the back. seas would part for him and he'd walk right up to the front counter. He's <laughs> yeah, happy yeah, right. Billy, baby. Hey, slide out of the slide way. Slide out and ask he needs a oh, hot dog. Oh, man. Yeah, you're right. They, they they climbed out of it last night. But Rosie, they've had a – I'm sure you, you've seen some of it, but I know you're concentrated on Toronto, uh, the Leafs. But, uh, I mean, they have five of their top six forwards out. And, you know, you, you can't look away from that because it has a lot to do with them dropping 10 in a row, to be honest with you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's tough to win uh, in this league to begin with. And then you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're down five guys. Getting lots back. Is, uh, he, yeah, he played last night. He'll, 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 lots will say it was, you know, he's back. So we're going to get going again. He's back. Yeah. He's back. The team's back. Yeah, 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 we got lots back. You play with yeah. lots, right, Rosie? Yeah, I did, man. He's uh it's funny because I like to see him as I still see him as this like young, young twenties up and comer, right? And then they were talking about as like this veteran presence and shit. I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, dude, he's been doing it for like a dozen years. It's nuts. Like <laughs> yeah. so all of a sudden That's these right. guys I think are these young bucks or wily vets and i'm hundreds of games played i'm like fuck man that's crazy but yeah you gotta you gotta change your mindset as these guys grow up right but he's he's done wicked i love lots man what a good dude he is and it seems like everyone who played with him just likes his funny attitude and his little weird sense of humor and his he thinks he's kind of quiet but he's actually a maniac i just love that dude <laughs> yeah yeah and he's the only guy rocking a, a letter too so he's kind of really stepped into a leadership role, as you're kind of alluding to, you know, these, these these immature kids actually mature. Well, some of them do anyways, and he's he's one of them. He's doing well, you know. We, we see lots and uh, keep in contact with him. But, uh, yeah, he's got that good energy, that good attitude. So serve nice. them well. Yeah, that's good. That's good to see. And, uh, yeah, being that down that many guys on your roster, I mean, obviously that's a kick in the nuts. Like, what are you, what are you going to do? You're out of, you don't, you can't control that, but you got to find ways to win with guys that, that come in. And obviously they've had trouble doing that. And I mean, you look at the Maple Leafs, they're down, their whole decor is decimated. They had both goalies go down. They're using their fourth string. They got one, two and three hurt. And they're still all out of the blue, just picking off wins when they should be cratering. So it's just weird, man. You never know what's going to happen with chemistry and stuff like that. And obviously the fly guys are having trouble finding it lately, but maybe they, maybe they cracked the code last night. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they played well. Uh, Carter Hart's had a, unre- I actually feel like Sandstrom's played well also, yeah, yeah. but uh, the gold, the gold tinning has been really good and kept them in a lot of games and they haven't been blowout games that they lost either. They were, you know, they're competing anyway, Rosie. It was, it's a, it's a lot different atmosphere uh, from what the guys are saying in the room and everything this year from, from the last couple. Good, good. good yeah. Year. Yeah, 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 you're not getting blown out. I mean, the morale is definitely uh, different, but, uh, you know, when you drop 10 games, it certainly still doesn't reflect well. You know, it doesn't matter what market you're in, doesn't really uh, look that 
that uh, good on paper, it's but not sexy. Um, it's, not, it's, it's, it's definitely not, not sexy. sexy, especially when things are trending in right, right? let alone national league. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> national <laughs> just want to crawl into a hole, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, um, what were your thoughts on on the hire, uh, you know, on, on the Tortorella hire? You weren't in Tampa's organization when he was there, were, were you? Yeah, I was. I, I didn't really play for him. I am um, like black ace shit. I did some practices and stuff, but nothing, uh, nothing like a season under him or anything, but like tons of camps, like from the time I was drafted to um, I got traded the Leafs. I was doing training camps with torts man and he's he's intense and he's uh he's old school but i do think he's fair um and it's just like when for some reason when he left vancouver i was like that's it for torts like that's it there's not a chance that old dinosaur is gonna get hired to coach these millennials and these gen z fucking kids these days there's not there's no way that would work but he's managed to adapt well enough to uh to stay in front of it and to to keep a job and to keep relating to teams. And, um, you know, I, I didn't mind it. I like Tortorella and the flyers together. It's kind of cool. You know, they like that intense style of, of play and the town would like them. I just, he was hoping that the players would respond to him. And then I think at the beginning of the year, this like promo, uh, promo video, but like his speech at the beginning of the year. And I was like, fucking ready to run through a wall for him. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're back now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's probably why they had that hot start. Maybe he needs to go do one of those again, but maybe they're all just scared of him now. Who knows what happens? But uh, I definitely think that that style of of coaching is, you know, he's one of the rare run- ones that's still kicking around, like the Keenans and that kind of thing, like see you later. And then now it's kind of more of that, um, you know, the Keefe and the, the John Cooper and those kind of guys who are – you know, don't rule through scare tactics or intimidation or any of that kind of thing. And I, I think these younger kids relate to that more, obviously, because they're such pussies, actually. But um, you know, <laughs> they're a little softer generation. Let's be honest, boys. I think our uh, our audience would agree. <laughs> but no, you got to baby them a bit. I remember, Riles, you must remember when you were coaching the same team I was playing on, man. Like you crack the whip on some guy who's just like, like literally not because he's in a slump, but because like he doesn't even show up. There's no effort. He doesn't have a, his give a fuck meter is at zero. And you crack the whip on him and say, hey, like we got to be better. Like we got to wake up. Time's ticking here. Let's go, baby. Like you're better than this. I know you are. Let's go. And instead of being like, fuck, I know I got to wake up. He, they just mm, go into a shell and oh, go yeah, sit on their phone in the corner. And, and I'm going to pout agent. until someone asks me what's wrong. It's like, my God, man. Imagine dealing with that stuff now is a lot more difficult. I don't think those old school guys have any relate to that at all. So you got to bring in the the players, coaches, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, the guys would cower pretty quickly. Just uh, you said to go, go into a shell. Um, I did hear Torts talking. I think it was on Spit and Tricklets um, talking about how he's had to evolve, like as you were be forced to, to be able to stay in the league right now. But you know, being more of an open you know, an open door kind of guy where I think maybe in the, in the back in the day, it was still that old school. You don't really talk to the coach, you know, I think now you're talking about Keith and some, you know, Cooper, it sounds like the communication is there, right? These, these coaches like absolutely communicate with their players. There's no, none of this, like, you know, hierarchy dictator type of, uh, of type of setup, but uh, it sounds like he's obviously evolved, right? I mean, you have to, um, but um, it's, it's just, it's necessary to, to, to play the game now, to be part of the game, coach the game now. Yeah, I think so. They kind of like treat, like, I don't know, I've said before, like back in the day, they'd like scream and yell at you and bag skate you and threaten you to get you to like yeah. respond or whatever. And now that doesn't work. It's more like relate to you and care about you and invest, you know, emotionally or, or just treat you as a person instead of just a, a body. And that seems to work. I get it. And like some of the old schools, like Tim Hunter, you know, he used to be like, uh, you know, you guys and your Red Bull, what do you need to get up for the game and all this shit? I'm like, you guys were smoking darts in between periods and yeah, you know, right. or leather skates that you hardly had to break stride. You know how hard it is to keep up to Connor McDavid? I think a Red Bull once in a fucking while is probably <laughs> yeah. 
Good <laughs> point. I know. Yeah. And, then, and then also, like, why did you guys need to get screamed at all the time to be motivated? Why did you need to be threatened and screamed at? What was wrong with you guys that that's what it took to motivate you? Why weren't you just already ready to rock is my question to those old guys. But uh, nonetheless, I like a good balance of both. You can crack the whip and kind of, you know, relate to the boys. And I think the guys having the most success in the coaching industry are guys that kind of find that balance, I guess, is is what I'm seeing and is what I would do if I had – you know, a team under me. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Craig Baruby is a good example. Yeah. He's a yeah, oh, perfect hybrid. Chief. Yeah. Perfect. You know, hybrid. you play for chief. Yeah. He's wicked. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, could have stuffed, yeah. stuffed me in the lineup a few more times. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah I know. We got to give him some shit yeah. about that. You're not kidding. <laughs> I remember the, the, the one night, uh, Rosie's in and just to, you know, spray yourself down, get, get ready, the, the cold water. And I think you had just leaned back and chief, Chief looks over and goes, you like big tits? You know, like, and, and Rosie's like taking his, and he like turns around and looks and he's like, ah, yeah. It's right after the anthem, you know? Uh, yeah, right. He's like, he like really that. does say that to you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we always say that just kidding around, but. I was uh, I was golfing with him actually, and uh, you know that you know that flyers. Uh, I think it's a charity thing at the beginning of the the year, the golf outfit, and uh, at Trump. So we were playing. I get I get paired up with Chief, and we're playing, and and he's a pretty good golfer, and we're playing some serious golf. And a couple of days before, we had just gotten there, and Drew threw a party up at his on his penthouse with the pool and all this stuff, and all the wives were there, and they were doing their oh, yeah. fucking thing, and they decorated and stuff, and. This was like the boys' first time of getting together and and hanging out and getting to know each other. And like midnight rolls around and the wives are still like the center of the party and stuff. And we were getting after it. And I think we'd like sung a song because we had like a live band there. And then Yeah, we like, you were oh. singing. I, yeah, I we were flying a little bit high and then uh jumped in the pool. And then so so Chief is taking his shot and he's like, Rosie, and he's looking at his ball and he's waggling. He's like, Heard a story about you the other day. And he goes, at that party, jump in the pool, get up and say, all right, ladies, it's time for you to get the fuck out of here. I love that shit. And then pulls the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. It was oh, awesome. so good. All right. Time He's to awesome. Leave. <laughs> uh. Yeah, he is a good golfer, that fucker. Good. Yeah. Sweet mitts. I said, where were the middies on, on the ice? He's like, he, he goes, I was too busy. I was too busy slapping guys around. He says, <laughs> Fuck. Oh man. Who was, uh, who was one? We were talking about coaches. Like who, who, who would have been, you know, you say your best coach for you and your, you know, say in one of your you know, best situations there. Yeah. I really like Dallas Eakins. Um, yeah. when he was, uh, with the Marlies, man, he was just, uh, He's a guy you'd go through a wall for. He was super fair. He was honest. Uh, he gave a shit about every single guy, like totally personable, understands like the the mental side of the game, which most uh, coaches just completely forget as soon as they enter the coaching realm. And I just, uh, he was just wicked, man. You just feel like you could approach him. You, you weren't like, you were just trying to, you were just, you just felt like he supported you instead of you were always trying to prove something to him, you know, which was new for me. And I, I appreciated that. And he, uh, he, he like played me more minutes and said, you can play, you just haven't had the chance. And that was nice to see. And, uh, you know, what stands out is John or Peter Laviolette too. Like when I got traded to Philly and then, um, he played me every single game when I was there after that lockout. And then I signed a two year extension with them and he came up and he's like, dude, I'm pumped. I can't wait to have you in. He goes, I'm not going to, he goes, I can't promise you 15 minutes every night, but you're going to be in every single night. It's not going to be like Toronto where you're in one, you're scratched one, you're play two, you scratch, scratch three, one, three, fuck. He's like, that's brutal, man. He goes, our boys want you in the lineup. I want you in the lineup. And you're going to be in there every night. So I'm glad you're here, man. And I was like, oh, my God, this is what I've wanted. So I went and had a huge summer and trained good and came into camp in shape. And then over that summer, they just went and uh, just lost her. In the first three games, they can him. They just can Laviolette the first three games in. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, is the second fucking fast. Can you, tell Chief what you, can you tell Chief what you told me, Lavi? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so he I was, like, yeah. well, I was like, who are we hiring? It's going to be some <laughs> maniac. And then it's it's Chief. And I was like, oh, thank God. 
And then she's yeah. just like, yeah, I don't know, whatever. I just didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> I, wanted, but I love Chief. I wish he played me more, but I was ready to play like 65 games that year and like really uh, take it yeah. up to the next level. And unfortunately it didn't happen. Mr. Snyder was uh, not, uh, not patient at the beginning of that season. He wanted one bad. Yeah. Yeah, the, the opposite yeah. that happened to me with Lavi when <laughs> once yeah. John Stevens got fired, Lavi came in. He had no use for me. Oh uh, shit! Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, you, you warmed up though. I warmed, warmed up. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, I led the league in warmups for sure. Yeah, he definitely loved me for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, interesting dynamic. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, that's that's tough uh, for sure. But uh, led the league in job. over warmups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's oh, true. Man. You sweat it out. You sweat it out. You sweat it out in the morning, actually. You get yeah, bagged if you're not going. Bagger. Right? Oh, I used, to, bagger. used to love looking at that Zamboni driver as you're just leaned over your stick and there's no yeah. one coming on after you and it's a nightmare and you're looking at him and you're like, come on, baby, come on, baby. And he's like, <laughs> I got a couple. I think it was MSG one day. Some guy's like, all right. He pulls up and wah, starts opening the gates. I'm like, nah, we're done, Timmy. Hunter, we're done, bud. Looks like we're done. <laughs> Oh, you and he just give it to me twice as bad next game. Oh, oh man, that's funny. Uh, did, you, did you enjoy some of those skates, or is it always miserable? No, I hated them, man. It was just you never knew, <laughs> yeah. how, you never knew how bad it was gonna be, right? Like, um, <laughs> we'd play if we it depends who your assistant coaches are, man. Sometimes they just take yeah, their frustration out on you, and other times they're like, hey, let's do uh. You know, like Kinger would play that game um, where we'd flip the nets at the blue lines or I think at the top of the circles, you'd flip them upside down and you got to play three on three and it's you got to just hit the mesh like no iron. Yeah. And we play that for like 45 minutes. And I mean, we're dying. Our legs are burning. We are soaked in sweat. And I would look forward to that because we'd be chirping off and like, fuck, no, I'm not changing teams. We're like, we're keeping the way it was yesterday and blah, blah, blah. And away you go and you make it fun of it. And then Tim Hunter would just go wallies back and forth until I oh, <laughs> wallies. <They're> wallies. <laughs> again. He told me we're going up to 10 one time. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth is one, back and forth, back and forth, two, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, three, up to 10. And he's like, I'll do oh, them man. with you. And then I think he got up to like six or seven and then quit. And then I get to 10 and I'm like, oh my God, that was a bagger. And then he goes, all right, like, what are you waiting for? Back down and back oh, down. And then back I, down. Puked. Oh, oh, I puked in the bench and I was God. like emptying water bottles, trying to get the puke out of the bench for the boys. And, and then, and then I get called, I get called in the afternoon. And I got to play that night. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That always oh, happens. That sure oh, yeah. happened. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that man. Was beautiful. It happened. Yeah. Oh man, I guess life I was lucky of all the two-pass games that I was able to play when I was uh, scratched. Yeah. I actually looked forward to the two-pass, and I, I almost forgot that I was actually in the NHL. That I was just getting paid to play two-pass. <laughs> yeah, it was such a fun experience for me. <laughs> was just playing two-pass and assisting coaches. Oh, oh man, shit. it's yeah. funny. It's funny you say, Rosie, you're waiting on the uh, Zamboni because I used to like go out and tell Joey Mall to go on my watch i'm like bro yeah. i want to go eat like you guys have been out there an hour man like let's go and it, yeah like, well, joey like the two hey that's what i mean they just wanted to play he just wanted to play he didn't want to get off Kato. well dude both yeah. guys like kinger and Mulsey could they would play as one of the dudes against you know three nhlers and there was no slack in there in them at all they'd win sometimes you couldn't get it from you you're, you're trying not to like slew foot him and dump him on his head and stuff a little bit but like <laughs> Man, those guys were keeping up with the, like NHL players. It was it was wicked. Those guys don't skip a beat, but they had pretty good careers too, I guess. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, Joey wasn't bad around the net. No, he was pretty good. He was good at conserving his energy, right? Not going like all the way in the corner. We're kind of just like staying inside the dots. The puck always kind of found him, and he definitely had some finish. Nice. I did not. You did once. Once, yeah, I did, did once. once. Yeah, yeah. What do you got, Nest? I was going to ask uh, Rosie. It's kind of – it's funny. Someone asked Riles this a couple of weeks ago. Um, they send in questions, and uh, it's a, it's you're probably going to say everyone, but, like, I was going to ask you, who do you, who do you think was the toughest guy you fought? Riley Cote, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> good answer. That's right, I, you I was guys, hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot you guys. You guys no, dude, I mean, up. yeah, you get asked that a lot by guys, and – um 
Yeah, no, like a Brian McGratton comes to mind, I guess, but, uh, you know, Colt Nor and I, I don't know, like Wes Garth, not even him. It's just, it doesn't matter, man. On any night, as you guys know, any guy can get the best of you. And um, it doesn't, like when you go up against those real big guys, it's like, I got nothing to lose, right? So you just go in there and, and whatever. But I found the toughest guys were like in the, in the minor leagues who – you know, we're more mutants than anyone you'd see in the show. And like, <laughs> maybe don't eat as good. And that's why they can't get up to the the big league, but they're just, they live to fight. And they're these maniac monsters with that don't feel any pain or probably all roided out. And you fight those guys and it's like, good Lord. Like they just have no quitting. And it doesn't matter what happens. They want to go again next shift. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, as soon as you get out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, I always thought like, like, you know, like a Michael Haley, like uh, a yeah. guy like that, who's like, he's tiny. He looks short and he looks thin, but he's not, he's a strong prick. And like a guy like me, yeah. who's taller, I fight him and it looks like, oh, so say you get the best of him. It's like, well, you should have looked at the size of him and say you have getting a draw, which is the most likely it's like, what the hell happened there? And heaven forbid you lose to the guy. And everyone's like, are you fucking kidding me? But those guys are so wiry so yeah. strong they feel no pain and they throw so freaking hard that a lot of those like middleweights but they're actual like heavy guys in the american league were always like man these guys you look bad no matter what happens and they're tough as freaking nails i always hated fighting those guys i'd rather get fight like a six foot seven guy so that no matter what yeah, happens right. it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no for sure i i agree with that fully i mean you know you say michael haley i think like a guy like aaron asham comes to mind too and it kind of in that category of salt he's smaller stockier you know oh yeah good fighter good strategic fighter um yeah. but yeah i know it's definitely yeah you fight the big big dogs there's nothing there is nothing to lose it's like you, yeah. if you sneak one out you sneak a sneak a, a lucky one in there like you you look like the, the champ you know yeah, totally. <laughs> so it's always better fighting guys way out of your weight class <laughs> yeah totally Sorry for the quick break. Just a quick shout out to our sponsor, DLI Commercial, a premier commercial construction and building maintenance company offering support at every phase. Thank you for your support. Check them out at DLI Commercial for all your construction needs. Back to the show. Yeah, I remember uh, us going into TO and, and you ended up, because you played with Colt Nor, obviously. Uh, you guys were teammates and buddies. <clears throat> and you ended up fighting him, and I'd say you got the better of him. Actually, I've heard him say that. Uh, and then uh, was that tough, like, fighting a buddy? Like, or is it just it's game time and it is what it is? Um, yeah, it was because, like, Orzi was, was good to me, and, uh, you know, we roomed on the road, and, and we I didn't know what it would be like uh, when I made that team, if I would be stepping on his toes or what, but he didn't have an inkling of that. He just – what's up buddy what's going on today and here's what's happening and what do you think about this guy and hey can you can you you know yank me around after practice I want to see how my shoulders feeling or whatever just like we were kind of like a one-two shot and he he kind of made it easy for me um to get into that locker room and that league and whatnot where if I feel like I'm tiptoeing around the heavy on the team that makes it even harder to to crack the the season and and start your career and all that stuff so he was really good about that with me and then you know it was my first game for the flyers um was in toronto against toronto and, and orzi had had some uh some some head problems like he'd have a, had a few concussions and was wasn't feeling his best so i didn't uh didn't know if we'd be going or not, but knew that he sure as hell wouldn't hesitate and wasn't sure what his attitude towards me would be. But I, I kind of pinched down on the wall a little bit and he was coming out and he didn't end up touching the puck. So I kind of didn't, didn't get him, but like could have clipped him, but didn't cause he didn't touch the puck, but I was ready to, to hit him had that breakout pass gone to him and and I didn't and then when I stopped to go back he was right there with his shit off like didn't hesitate like you were you were gonna run me you almost ran me and <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. away we went but uh I don't know I don't think he liked it because afterwards he was uh he was pissed off like f you a little bit and this and that and I yeah. I thought we'd do the old that a boy or is he that a boy Rosie that a boy or is he that shit uh, and he wasn't into it very much and then afterwards he was like oh I was just caught up in it all and whatever and you know he was he was uh he was still the dude in Toronto and um yeah I didn't know if we'd go or not but we ended up going and it was good but it is definitely a little bit weird but in the heat of the moment it's fucking survive right yeah you yeah that's it yeah I was, that, that actually makes me think of something else uh you ever have uh you ever have any interesting uh convos with a guy you fought once you get in the box 
anything funny or anything like nuts? Because you seemed uh, like you, you fought a lot, obviously, but you 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 stayed. I mean, without of course you'd be like, let's go, look at the bench or something like that. But you were pretty reserved as far as you know. You didn't ever seem like you were like crazily pissed off or anything like that. Of course, I didn't see every single fight of your career, but anyway, yeah. did you ever have anything fun funny happen in a in a in the box when you got there? Well, yeah, I never got, I was never doing the belt or F you and guys are getting too crazy. I, I said, you know, if anyone wants to go, I'm here, let's go. And we'll see how she goes. And I'm just here to fire up the boys in my bench. I could give a shit about you and, and whatever. But, um, I remember early trying to make the leaps. I think it was still preseason and, um, um, oh, I'm having a Brad May was trying to make the, uh, the Red Wings. So we're at the, we're at Joe Lewis and he had just gotten like a, a PTO signed and it was kind of like in the middle of preseason. So he's out there and I'm trying to make the team and he's just like, who knows how much he was skating or whatever. And I, I was like, Mayday, Mayday, like, can I have one? Can I have one? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Second period though. Got to get my legs under me. Second period. I was like, Hey, no worries. So second period comes and I go up, Mayday, Mayday. Like I need to get one here. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, one more shift, one more shift. I got to ease into it. I got to, I got to get a sweat on. I got to get a sweat on. <laughs> and so he keeps he's like, absolutely, baby. Absolutely. One more shift. He keeps saying that. I'm like, okay, like, I don't want to, I don't want to like <laughs> you and ask you again, but like you promised. <laughs> you promised me. <laughs> So, so then, then we scrap and it's a good fight spirited and we both go down and we pop up and I was like, thanks Mayday. And he was like more jacked and he was like, yeah. And he's banging my helmet. He's like, you keep playing that way, Rosie. You're going to make that fucking team. And, like, <laughs> and then in the penalty box the whole time, he's like, I love it, buddy. I love what you're doing. You're going to make that squad. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing. And I was just like, oh my God, it was so That's sick. Awesome. <laughs> he's That's awesome. Awesome. in the world, yeah. Yeah. he's oh, the man. man how old is he have been like close to 40 or what is good question man 40. if i'm like 24 he would fuck he would have been pushing 40 to be fighting the young guys coming out good for him and unbelievable and then he went battle of the blades that year and i was in toronto and he uh i went to watch him he asked if i wanted some tickets and then we had beers in the dressing room after and uh he's like he's just the nicest dude in the world he's such a beauty so i like that story because he's uh you know you watched him fight like the big boys coming up like back yeah. in the day day so it was pretty cool to to cross paths with him yeah no doubt he's legendary fucking yeah. that's that's a great story <laughs> well, see that excitement i can't yeah, imagine awesome. still being fighting in the nhl being that excited about it <laughs> 40 oh, years old no matter how much money i'm getting paid fuck he just has Seriously. to get his legs on anything he's he's or he wanted to get a lot more yeah it's oh. like he didn't even skate all summer and it was his first summer <laughs> skate and he's like give me a couple more <laughs> Chips. You know, you know, it's funny. My first year I was in Florida and uh, I took care of the visiting teams and Buffalo was in town and Jim Pizzatelli was their uh, medical guy for a long time. And uh, he used to make robes for the tough guys. Oh, he loved yeah. all the I tough guys. This. And this guy who's he's a beauty man. And um, he, he was really good to me. So he never went back to the hotel, so we're there, and, and obviously they got Ray and they got May, and I don't know who else. That was my first Barnaby, 20, 20, 25 years, 26 years ago. Um, and he's like, uh, who, do you, who do you guys got down there? And I'm like, oh, we, you know, Paul Laws has been fighting a lot. He's pretty, you know, he's doing well, like whatever. And he's like, oh, you think you can take uh, Brad May? And I'm like, man, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know, Brad. I don't really know who he is yet. Like, you know, it's my first year and I've been in college. I obviously yeah, right. knew who he was, but sure. anyway, yeah. so long story short, the, all the boys come in and they're getting ready for the game. And, and, uh, he calls me in the medical room and, and Ray and, and Rob Ray and, and May are standing there and he's like, Hey, Sudsy, they call me Sudsy because of my dad. Yeah. He's like, Suds, who'd you say, uh, could beat up, uh, Brad May? And I was like, what? And you're like, he's standing right there, right? I'm like, what, what do you mean? And he goes, what well, you said earlier, did you, who, number three lost down there? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's, he's like, and Brad May is looking at me. He goes, did you say that? And I'm like, I did. And he started dying laughing. He's like, all right, it's cool, man. He goes, I don't want to fight that big motherfucker. He yeah, said, he goes, I'll go with someone else. You go back but to I'm your... Like, Go back to your locker room and like, I might have gotten you in some trouble. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, man. I wasn't even trying. He was like, pizza's like Don King, man. He was just trying to get all these fucking tilts going, man. Oh, man. Yeah. That's hilarious. This wasn't Peter Worrell, wasn't there? <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
<laughs> no <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> Guys keep getting bigger. Oh man, that is priceless. Wait, uh, quickly, Rosie. Uh, you played one year in college. Yeah. And for, when you played junior before that, like, were you were you mixing it up? Because I saw your pens. You had like two hundred the first year, and were, were you mixing it up? Yeah, here and there. Like, I played. I got listed with Seattle in the in the dub, and didn't want to go to Seattle. Was just not mature or ready enough to leave my hometown and my small town and all that shit. I was like, "Are you kidding me, Seattle of all places?" Uh, so was kind of freaked out. And then I was like, you know, I, I was kind of a late bloomer, and I had gotten drafted, and or I hadn't gotten drafted, but I was playing midget trip and had this, you know, some interest in the dub and everything. And I was like, "Man, I'm kind of late bloomer here. I don't want to get thrown to the wolves in the dub and then be toast." So I'm like, maybe I'll stay home, play uh, tier two, play junior A and and then go to college and have time to actually get better so that I can hopefully make the show. And um, I was a defenseman at the time. And so then played tier two junior. And um, yeah, like we had such a tough team back then. We had, we probably had six, seven guys that were not scared of much at all. And we didn't have a designated guy, but it was just if anyone wants it, there's lots of guys that are willing. So you'd get into a handful a year for sure. Like, I don't know, maybe around the 10, 7 to 12 mark, something like that in a year, that many scraps. And uh, and then kind of the same thing all going through until I switched to forward. And that's when like the 25, 35 fights a year started to come. It was like I just went haywire playing forward and you just chase guys down and chase your own dumps and, and hit the D man and get in the goalie's face. And they just started coming for you. Right. There's no stop. And we're on the D man. You kind of, you know, ride a guy into the corner and bury him and then get back to the front of the net. It doesn't look as aggressive for a guy yeah. to come and grab you as just chasing your dump, like a meathead and burying him. <laughs> totally. in the puck out there, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, lines, yeah. 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 I was, I, I was asking because then you go to college, right. And yeah. you obviously you can't fight in college. So, uh, I just thought that was that was wild, uh, and you go to you had to go to a cage too. I would imagine or a bubble. Yeah, went to a cage too, which was weird. You, you got used to it in a couple of skates though, but everyone's look, everyone's acting pretty tough in the yeah. in the yeah, in sure. NCAA leagues and and whatever. But I mean, I I was I think I led the country in in penalty minutes that year, and I didn't even fight. It was just like. It was incredible. They'd get they'd get a breakout pass on the wall, and they'd just go one hand on their stick and just skate as fast as they could with the puck on their stick with their head down. And as a demon, I just I just pivot and go right against the grain up right, right around beside the penalty box at the red line. Just boom, you just crush these guys, and and they're just like they cannot believe what just happened to them. Like they've never been hit <laughs> like that before. And I remember that everyone would wear their cage loose because it was cool when it would rattle around and you'd hit guys and I'd blow up guys' chins. There was blood always coming down guys' necks because their chin and you'd blow them up because they never got hit and they never picked up their head. And I would take charging after charging after roughing after elbowing, take six, eight penalty <laughs> minutes at night. But guys were just dead and they'd never played that kind of hockey. And Scott Sandlin, who was there, was just like, I don't, I do not care how many of those we have to kill, keep doing it. And I just, yeah, the best and then, yeah. yeah, after a year, you know, like Tampa won the cup that year before and they had drafted me already and they wanted to get the, all their D men that they had drafted into their system. Cause they had this secret defensive system, even though the lockout had just happened and everything had changed. So it kind of blew up in their face. But, uh, after that one year of college, they're like, I hated going to school, man. It was like, in, I just hated the school part of it. Like actually trying to get a degree while you're trying to focus on hockey and um that was kind of difficult so when they came and offered me a contract and said hey we kind of like to get you playing pro you're more that style we love that you went there and had a year of development and we we think you got better but like you know four years wasn't even an option and then all of a sudden two years wasn't so um i just took off and and signed and started that journey i knew i could always finish school if i wanted but there wasn't going to be nhl contracts on my doorstep very for very long and very often so just took it and ran and yeah everyone that looks back they're like you played college it's kind of a head twister but yeah i used to be a defenseman and the rest yeah. is history i guess yeah that's yeah it's awesome. pretty wild and then to be drafted uh out of the the alberta league i mean junior a is <clears throat> say pretty impressive right well, going into that draft did you did you know that you were gonna get drafted obviously you'd been talking to some teams yeah i remember um 
I don't know. I was pissed off at uh, Seattle because when I told them that I wasn't going to come and I wanted to play tier two, the guy like lost it on me and had me in like tears and everything. And he's like, you come here, you could get drafted. Um, you may not even get a scholarship, let alone freaking get drafted. And you think you're going to do that. That's wow. the end of your hockey career. And what are you doing and all this stuff? And like they had called me earlier and been like, how, how tall is your mom? What's your dad's shoe size and all this shit? Just trying to see how like big I'll get. And I'm like, am I, I'm just such a piece of meat to you, man. So I, yeah. I always had this chip on my shoulder, like F you, right? Like I'll show you. And then I was just on central scouting's list when I was in school and my buddy who like has the hockey news and shit's like Rosie, Rosie. And he had like the newspaper, the hockey news, the magazine. And my name was on it on central scouting's North American skaters list. And I was like, and my heart dropped. I was like, oh my God, like that, that was my first any interaction with the NHL at all. And like, that was the goal. That was the dream. That was everything. And then to see, wow. you know, that article with the NHL logo in it, and then your name in print was just like, here we fucking go. So then I was just totally like, let's make this happen. And just went balls to the walls in that league. And yeah, I got drafted and, and got a scholarship that first year. So I was I was happy because I had a little chip on my shoulder from, you know, those guys thinking I, I had to play in the dub or, or I'd be toast or, or whatever. So it's kind of cool to prove them wrong in that sense. But uh, yeah, I just, I was a big proponent of like, if you're good enough, they'll find you. There's scouts everywhere, man. They're going right. to. Oh, yeah. So. No, it's amazing. Yeah. Super unconventional. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't realize that until looking through, uh, you know, through some of your, your, your history and backstory. And then I, I did know that you played a, a year of college, but, uh, you know, pretty, it's pretty inspiring. You know, you think about that, right. It's like, uh, but you need yeah. that chip on your shoulder, right? I mean, I think that's important to have that. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's just, you just become complacent, I guess. Right. Yeah. Like it's like, I just, it's funny talking to like coaches at the rink nowadays with like my, my six-year-old more so my nine-year-old and, and whatnot. And, and they're like, man, this, my kid, he's just got to do this and he's got to do that. And he's got to get better at this. And, and I'm like, and then I watch the kid and he's just like looking in the stands yeah. and like, just wants to hang out with his buddies. And I'm like, you, you're not going to, you're not going to like practice that into him. He has to have the drive and that's yes. the bottom line. Like it, it does not matter what, what you got going or what you wish for your kid or, or how much skill you have. If you don't have that drive where like, I need to make it like head down, ass up. I'm not going to mm. stop until it happens. If you don't have that, you just, you just don't make it, man. And I mean, right. how many guys do we know coming through the ranks and everything who looked like superstars and their parents were already freaking, you know, touting them as this and that. And they, they went absolutely nowhere. And, it's it's got to come from within and you know these parents that are all jacked up these days at minor hockey level that's kind of some of their thing they're like man he just doesn't he doesn't have that drive he doesn't have that uh. i'm like well you can't teach that so just you yeah. know it's up to him like i don't know what to tell you you can't teach that it's got to come from an individual inside R rosie yeah. I, I i hear exactly what you're saying elvis is his second year might and there's we go to games and there are parents that think their eight-year-old is going to get drafted next summer like oh, yeah. I really believe that they think that like at, at the age of eight, you know, I'm like, sometimes I have to like tell myself, man, Elvis just turned eight. Like I'm like mad about something he did, you know, not mad, but you know, you're like, ah, yeah, he should have had that one. But I'm like, dude, he's eight years old, man. Like, I and know. he's having fun. Right. Like, so you always have to remember that. Totally. Yeah. But it's wild at the rinks, man. I, I've this seen some shit in the last year and a half that I, I can't even explain. So I know, dude. Parents. We're talking about nine-year-olds. Imagine when you get to fourteen years old and they actually have like a CHL draft and stuff. I just, I'm scared of it, man. I don't want anything to do with it. These parents are lunatics, dude. They're, yeah. they're losing. <laughs> it's all about them. It's not about their kid. It's like I always right. want to say, who wants this more, you or him? You know? <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. I know the yeah. answer every time. So I don't know. I just try. <laughs> My thing is, as far as you want to go, I'll go with you, but it's going to come from you. It's not going to be because I push you. You got any questions, you want to work on something, I'm there. But uh, don't expect me to be the one that helps you make it somewhere. It's got to come from within, right? And and I, that's that's it for me. And those I just don't see that a lot at the rink, and it makes me want to stay away as much as possible because it's crazy town in there. It is, yeah, man. It is, it is highly toxic for sure. But that, that ingredient you're talking about obviously is the most important ingredient and it, it can't be taught. Like you can do all the skill work and all, you see all this, you know, the, the flashiest sticks, you can be the best skater, all this stuff. But 
um, you know, that ingredient is it, right? And and like to your to your point there, Rosie, it's like you you're there as a support system for your son, but like it comes it has to come from within. Like you can't do it for him. It doesn't matter how many connections you have in the hockey world, right? I mean, it's like you still have to go out there and perform. But I think we lose sight of that, you know, especially like parents that have never like played at a high level and they, you know, they see their kid maybe being like better in their age. I just feel like at some point that caps out and then it, you have to have that special ingredient. Otherwise it's, it's just skill work. It's just like you're showing up at the rink and paying a lot of money, but um, you're, you're wasting probably both people's time. I mean, the parents time and the, and the children's time, but uh, yeah. And you've seen it where like guys are, are super skilled, but they don't have that. So they can make it to the American league or something, but like their attitude's not great probably because their parents were idiots in the way they raised him and everything they told him his whole life. And, and they struggle and ultimately don't make it. And then a guy with less skill, maybe who has that heart and who has that drive all of a sudden becomes like, you know, an 800 game NHL player, because you know, that's just that mixed with a bit of skill is like, see you later. But that yeah. ingredient is like the most important, you know, and and you can still make it without all the tools in the toolbox if you have that because like coaches and GMs and scouts just gravitate towards that shit, right? And pe- you want that on your team and it's just so much more important, but no one, there's not a box on the score sheet for that, but it's kind of just an unsaid thing. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you're that guy. I was that guy. And how many guys did we see? You know that had way more skill than us that that never that never found their way and it was just like you have all the skill you have all the same resources we have it's just that it's that it's that uh, the x factor i guess right it's like the it's the spirit of the individual that you know yeah. you, you gotta dig deep right i mean it's, you can only serve it on a silver platter so much and then the guys actually gotta yeah. bite into it but um yeah. yeah it's 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 something that needs to be talked about more at the youth level because i think it's i mean you say usa hockey is probably much similar to to hockey canada and we're just like so so high skill now so high skill i'm not sure how you teach that ingredient you know it's almost like it's like it, it needs to come from some sort of struggle right it's like yeah they're it kind of to your point you got a coach tell you'll never make it you're never going to get drafted you know you barely get a scholarship out of that you know what i mean you need to have some sort of I don't know, friction, um, you know, or, 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 yeah. or grow up in poverty and, you know, have nothing. And then, you know, I mean, you, you need to grow out of it. It's almost like it needs to ha- be come from, from some sort of struggle almost, right? To have that. Yeah. It's like those, it's like your attitude, right? Your attitude towards like adversity, like you go through adversity with the right attitude. All of a sudden you come out of it better on the other side. And now all of a sudden you have character because of it. Or if you have the wrong attitude, you go through adversity. All of a sudden it's poor me and hang my head and I lose confidence and I want to point my finger at everything around me. And then good, good luck in this business, you know, with that attitude, because you're going to go through so much shit. I do not care who you are. Connor McDavid has gone through more shit than anyone would even know and look how good he is and how much driving does that like it's everyone's going to go through shit and how do you how do you respond and how what's your attitude during that and that's where that desire comes from it's like put the blinders on i do not care what any of this is i'm just going forward i'm trying to get better i'm just moving on i'm just going to do everything that's asked of me i mean that's that's all anyone can ask i guess and i mean like i said you put that attitude on a guy with tons of skill man and it's it's weird because it's free it's everyone's got it in them i i don't have the ability to like dangle like Claude Giroux with that speed I just don't have it I can't even access it where anyone can just work their nuts off anyone can go through a wall anyone can be a good team and anyone can do all that stuff and and then just have that drive and so many guys just choose not to and it's like man you're making it pretty hard on yourself by not adding that to your Rolodex you know yeah, right no kidding yeah yeah I agree it's it's almost like as a parent like putting your child setting you're setting your child up almost for failure putting them through um you know calculated adversity if you will right uh, where yeah. you, you'll learn pretty quickly how they respond and then maybe you tee it up again you know, and tee it up again but if it's too easy right and if they're just fully fully rolling on skill um and there is no adversity like when there is adversity it's like how does that play out you know especially as you get older so it's almost like you almost have to put them in environments to fail or make it really hard on them, have that adversity and that, and that friction that, and, and then see, you know, you, you either cut out for it or you're not, um, yeah, in totally. my opinion, anyways. <clears throat> totally. Uh, so thoughts, talking Matt? about, talking about drive and everything, I gotta, I have to ask Rosie before I forget, um, you played with, uh, Phil, the thrill and, uh, T.O. 
Fuck me. What? That's baloney. Uh, <laughs> he just, he just, uh, I don't know what, how many games is he at now, baller? Oh, no. Well, he's over oh, a thousand, yeah. but uh, right, did you right. see that happening, Rosie? Um, uh, no, I didn't, man. Not with that body. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that bod pod. Oh, There's, man. There's He's a no freak in nature, I, though. Oh, a, a milk, a milk bag on two pipe cleaners is <laughs> never gonna get injured. <laughs> I don't get it, man. That guy's a freak. I've known Phil a long yeah, time. I had him with USA Hockey right when he came out of college there, and uh, yeah, man. I, so I've kept in touch with him, and obviously we'd see him all the time, and he just makes me laugh, like yeah. just the shit that comes out of his mouth. But Lukey was telling us, Shen was telling us. Uh, when they were doing uh, at the beginning of the year, doing all the testing, like he would kill it. He'd come in there and flip flops. Like he, I think he told us that he he was in there and flip flops and did the squats and like beat everyone or whatever, however it was. And he's like, "I'm done," and walks out. You know? I'm done. And and Randy oh. Carlisle was always giving it to him too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> he was always so mad. He'd drag his feet around in his flip flops and his hoodie, <laughs> like he was always freezing. He's like. Fuck me. He was just always <laughs> <laughs> everything was wrong. Oh god. But uh yeah. He just go turn on the jets and away he went, man. He was right. a it's high amazing. level performer, man. Yeah. Yeah, you can't no. you can't that's uh, how, it comes out to how many like ten years straight without missing a game, like yeah. eleven years, like and points that's, and like, points. It, like it's incredible. I don't think I, I don't think that'll ever be broken, will no, it? Like, there's no chance. Like I don't think so. I don't think so. Man. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. He, it, and I mean, even Yans, like Yans, oh, yeah, that long too. Like it, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but Yans is at least in shape and better shape. <laughs> I shouldn't say the guy's not in shape because yeah, he performs. He can, yeah, he's I performed mean, he's for how many years, man? man. Like, hey. Yeah, it's. I just he just makes me laugh. I love that guy. Yeah, good for him, dude. He's just... yeah. <laughs> I had to ask you though. <laughs> just hear yeah, him talking. Priceless oh, story, man. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Well, Rosie. We appreciate you. I know you got to get rocking and take care of some stuff around home there. And um, oh, yeah. we appreciate you just carving out the time for us. You know, awesome. Hey, it's a pleasure, boys. Let's not make it the last time. It's fun. And no. uh, like like what you guys are doing, I follow you and um, see what's going on in Fly Guy land. It's nice that you guys are doing it. I love to see your faces. Yeah, yeah. man. You're doing a great job as well, bro. I'm happy. Uh, this this is something you, you could do. We were talking about this earlier. Like, you're, you, you know, you communicate well and – you know the game, so it, it's awesome. And hopefully we'll be joining you uh, soon. That's coming later, though. We'll tell you about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Uh, 100%. I'm if like, you're ever uh, in this neck of the woods, too, you get the the, the you know the travel budget squared away and, you, and you're yeah. flying around, then let us know. Love yeah. to have you in the studio here. Trust me, that, that'll be on the bucket list for sure. We'll make it happen. <laughs> All Beautiful. right, brother. All right, Rosie, appreciate you. All right, dudes. Thank you, guys. Good luck with Take everything. Care. Thanks for having me. All right. A big thank you to our boy, Jay Rose Hill. What Rosie, a what a funny guy. dude. Oh, eh? dude, dude. Tough as nails, too, oh, man. Yeah, he, man. Was, he was tough. Yeah, he had great me, guy. Had me in tears. Great, great locker room guy. Yeah. He was great on the bench, man. You know, it's tough. Like, you went through it. Like, I, I, I was watching some some of his fights, and, and uh, there was one where he, I think it's when he fought Orr, and he ended up having to fight another absolute monster and they're like he had had a minute 30 of ice time i mean like how, how tough like you had to do the same thing sometimes yeah. like i can't even imagine but uh great guy great team guy he was awesome to have i, I really liked him a yeah lot. i like rosie obviously had a battle with him and then i had an opportunity to coach him when he was uh, down in lehigh so got to know him on a personal level and uh, yeah just a good teammate uh, he had a great attitude down in the minor leagues there um, so it was uh, it was nice to get him on and see him and get him to tell some stories because, man, I was I was dying. Oh, no, some funny some, some he's funny a stuff funny there. Guy, man, he really is. Yeah, so big thanks to Jay Rosehill, Tell Two Point Oh. Yep. And I think we're ready for the clear questions now. Oh, you know what? I think we're ready for them as well. Clear questions brought to you by our friends at Clear Rum. Uh, Baller, what do you got? This is from Anthony Varasso over on Instagram. This is for both of you. Mm -hmm. Any good stories of back in the day with Richie, Karts, and the Updog? Ooh. Hmm. Lots of great stories. I'm not sure if we're able to yeah. dig, dig, yeah. in, dig, <laughs> dig, dig into that darkness. Yeah. Uh, um, man, 
we had a lot. We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of that's fun. That's for sure. A lot of fun. Um, oh man, what comes to mind there, Nas? What comes to mind? Uh, Down the beach. Yeah, I mean, there was, always, there was always there was always something, something going on. Yeah, you know, like uh, Richie's always pretty quiet. Uh, Up Dog was the guy. Um, stirring, he's stirring, stirring up it up, fun. and he seemed to be able to attract a lot of attention. Uh, he's good at that around uh, around the boys. You know, he seemed to bring a lot of females over. Mm-hmm. He had that ability. He did have that ability. Um, but you know, just having a good time. I mean, I you know, there's unfortunately some things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't laughing. even know where to begin because yeah, I feel I mean, like it was, it was one big blur. It was <laughs> one big shaker back it then. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a bonanza. It was a bonanza. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy Frank said. <laughs> it, oh, it seemed to be one uh, weekly. Yeah. So. Um, Man, I I can't think of anything that off the top of my head or, or anything that we could uh, say without. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, protecting I mean, during people. the season there was certainly a lot of green lights, and then uh, I'm thinking like the off season, even leading up to training camp, how we landed up down to the beach and different casinos and and the shore and all these good places, uh, r- ripping it up too. So yeah. I'm trying to think uh, in a specific story, but uh, seems to be one big mishmash of uh, of good times. Yeah. For sure, sorry. Sorry, can't give yeah. a, better, a better answer. I mean, I I could tell you some really good ones, but we can, we can't. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't be right. Yeah, <laughs> right. This one's from Kevin McLaughlin over on Instagram. Nasty. If the Flyers had beaten Jersey in 2012, do you think you guys would have made it to and won the cup? Ooh, Ooh that's tough. We were a really young team, but we were flying, man. I mean, the the guys were so confident. You know, you beat your your rival, your biggest rival, probably I would say, um, the Penguins, and then uh, wheels kind of fell off after game one. Danny B snuck one in there on Marty Brodeur. It was kind of a bad goal, but Danny could score goals, man. Yeah, he did. And I found a way, and, and so we, you go up one nothing, and uh, I don't know if we would have won the cup. That's hard to say because we didn't even get past the second round, <laughs> but. Um, it, it was fun. It was a fun team. It was so young. If you look back at all the like. You know, Coots was a rookie. He was 18 right, years yeah. old. Like, uh, we had Braden Shin, obviously Simmer. All those guys were new. Matt Reed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it was know, a great kind of run. I'm not sure we were we would have won the cup. I, I would have to say probably not, but, I mean, God, yeah. you never know. How would you ever know? You, get, you know, your goalie gets super hot. Well, that's it. Anybody right? can Anybody win, can right? Win. But um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a fun year, that's for sure. Last one from... Chris Mayer and his paid blue check mark over on Twitter. Chris. What is your guy's favorite story on chemo? Ooh, chemo. Gosh, he was funny. His little, what is that, little mischievous that, laugh. Yeah. He was always up to. He's always, he was always doing something yeah, just to get someone pouring going. a little fuel on the fire. I think he was yeah. good at getting Hartsy going and you know, drum, drumming <laughs> he up a little was. chaos and kind of sneaking in the background and laughing about it. Yeah, he was a great guy, man. He Or he is a great guy. Yeah. Um, that laugh, though, like you the said, laugh, he, he, yeah. you can, he might be hiding around a corner and you hear so, something happening and you hear him laughing and he's the one that started. He got someone to do something or say something. But uh, he would, uh, you know, he would play like like dumb, like he didn't understand something. Yeah, and right. He would say, and then just to get you going and then he's, you know, start that little laugh. I, I loved being around Chemo. He was awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like if there was something going on and Chemo was around, he was definitely involved. <laughs> yes, even a, a, as innocent as he looks. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just kind of like always, uh, o- always uh, sneaking around and, and teeing stuff up. Especially if Hartsey was around, and uh, I feel like he was uh, um, always planning something. Yes, for plotting sure. something and and, and and screwing around with guys. But yeah, Chemo was awesome teammate. I loved he, he was awesome. having him around, and certainly loved li- listening to his little snickering laugh. I, I'm st- I'm still a little shocked. Kimo is not coaching. Yeah, no, I right? thought he might. I thought he might. We had talked about it a few years ago. Um, our coach actually called and asked about him, uh, one of our friends, actually, and uh, he just wasn't ready at the time because yeah. Sammy was still playing uh, or was younger, and his daughters, you know, I think he was waiting for one to get into high school, his youngest. But, uh, you know, I guess he just doesn't want to do it. Oh, he's also made enough money. He probably can just sit back for a couple more years and yeah, he could probably do that. Observe, as well. and, yep, and uh, see how things play out for him. But uh, yeah, I think when uh, when he gets the itch and the call, uh, it'll probably be divine timing, and he'll he'll know when that time is. So I think he'd be a great coach. I think so too, you know? for sure, for sure. So. Well, that's a wrap, Nas. That's it. Episode ninety-five in the books. Can you believe it? Nope, I can't. No, no. 
creeping Not on right now. I know, creeping on it. <laughs> creeping on it. Uh, All right. Well, until next week for episode 96, be sure to tune in next week. And if you like what you're seeing and hearing, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Give us a like, a follow. And until then, stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.